Yes guys, this guys are and welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but we are on the edge of reaching a huge milestone. A thousand subscribers. That'll mean the world to me. Um, I only started this, really, this is my first proper year I'm counting as, because the first year was disrupted massively by lockdown. So I want to start the video off by saying thank you to everyone who subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed yet, and this video has come out, and I'm not on a thousand subscribers yet, I'm about 15 off make sure you subscribe down below. And even if I am at a thousand, make sure you hit that red button below and turn it gray. So in today's video, I'm gonna be building my FPL team for this year, Fancy Premier League. If you guys don't know what the game is, get to know it. It's an interactive football game where you build a team of players in the Premier League and they get points depending on if they score, assist, keep clean sheets, get points taken away for yellow cards, red cards, you get the gist of it. I would consider myself quite a keen FPL player. I don't put hours and hours into it, but I do like to try and win because I'm a competitive person. So let's get into it. Right, first up is the goalkeepers. Now, I did actually have Raya in, in my recent squad because I never really like to spend big with the goalkeepers. Realistically, you might be thinking, oh, why are you not having Edison, Lloris? Alisson, De Gea in there because they're going to keep the most clean sheets but realistically it's not all about clean sheets it's about save points and a lot of the top scoring goalkeepers are not the ones who have got the most clean sheets last year Ray was a brilliant goalkeeper for me I had him a lot of the year but it looks like Strakosha from Napoli is going to come in and I'm guessing he's going to take that number one spot so for me another 4.5 goalkeeper which I had a lot of last year is Sanchez and from Brighton and he's going in my team and the backup to him still because realistically the four million goalkeeper is not going to be someone who plays but realistically you may as well put it as the team as your first choice goalkeeper because if he doesn't play the second choice will. Moving on to the defence I mean there was no chance of making this team without Trent Alexander-Arnold the price 7.5 is ridiculous for how many assists he got last year clean sheets he's pretty much in one of the best defences in the world if not the best I mean, he gets so many goal contributions and and bonus points as well. He simply has to be in there. An injury-free Chilwell is incredible. I'm telling you now. I mean, he was getting more points per game than Reese James before he got injured. I was at a couple of games where he scored. I remember I was at the 7-0 thrashing when they played Norwich um, and he scored in that one as well. He was mental on goals at one point. So he's a definite player in there for me. Another defender then that I'm going... I'm going big on the defence. Ivan Perisic. Now, really... Even Perisic is a winger turned wing back. He's got an incredible eye for goal and I'm pretty sure and I can promise you that he's going to get a lot of contributions this year. He's also of course for Spurs going to be a massive signing coming on a free transfer from Inter Milan. Conte knows him well. He thrived under him at Inter Milan and I really do think he's going to be an incredible signing and he has to be one to be in your FPL teams this year. Now you might be thinking right so you're going to go with a cheap defender here because really you only have really three or four defenders and they're normally not really that expensive. But no, I'm going with Joao Cancelo now. Seven million, I think it's quite a lot for him. I'm pretty sure he's six, 6.5 million last year. Um, Man City, of course, incredible defence. He's going to get a lot of contributions, I think that has to be said. A lot of people have Cancelo in their team or they go with Robertson for me because I already have Trent Alexander-Arnold, who I think is the main defender at Liverpool who is going to get you a lot of points. I've gone with Joao Cancelo. I think... His crossing's insane. I think his link up with Kevin De Bruyne and Haaland, especially this year, is going to be incredible. He's also taken the number seven shirt, surprisingly, which I think is a bit weird. The last defender I've gone with then is Takahiro Tomiyasu. Now, I've got to be honest, I'm not really convinced by Tomiyasu, but it does look like he has secured the right back slot for next season. Um, I thought it was a bit of a liability towards the end of the season, I'm not going to lie. I think in the Newcastle game, he was really poor. Northland Derby, I don't think he actually played that one. He was a bit injury hit, and to be honest, a lot of people have been going Ben White, but really, I don't really see the point in FBL in really including centre-backs, just because they don't really get as many attacking returns. And I'm not really saying Tommy Ashley's going to get many assists or goals, but on the off chance, he might get you one or two. Also, they're getting Zinchenko as well, who I do think is a good signing, but he is primarily a left-back. So I think Tommy Ashley's slot, providing he beats Cedric, which, I mean... You've got to be awful to not. I think he has that slot secured. Bit of change of scenery, a lot of background noise out there. Right, 61 million left in the bank. I'm going with the 13 mil man, very expensive, Mohamed Salah now. Son's around at a similar price this year. I think he's 12 million, but for me, you just can't have Salah at your team. He did go through a bit of a rough patch at the end of last year. Still at that point last year, I was never really considering to take him out of my team. Just because you really do doubt that if everyone has him, 
and he performs and you don't have him, you're gonna fall down the pecking order. Next one up then, I've debated this one, Diaz or Saka, Diaz or Saka, or Kulusevski actually. I've gone with Luis Diaz. Now, I think by all the signs I'm seeing, which are definitely over-exaggerated by Liverpool's pre-season training, Darwin Nunes isn't having the best time of it. Although you can pretty much edit anyone to look awful, he doesn't look like he's doing great. Obviously, Mane's gone, so there's a bit of a void there. Of course, Yotta's there, but he can also play up front as well, Yotta, who played a lot up front last year. Firmino's also there. I don't think he's going to be getting much game time this year. There's even been rumours of him moving away from Liverpool. Diaz, for me, is one that I think has to go in there. I think, at the moment, he's the best option out of him and Saka, just because I don't think Saka's going to get as many contributions, and I think Diaz, with a full season, is going to thrive. Kudasevsky was also in one of my drafts. The doubt I have around him is that, obviously, we've brought in Richardson for 60 million. I think Richardson must be getting some game time if we bring him in for that much. And I do think he will play quite a bit. So Kudasevsky, for me, I think he's definitely going to start the first game because, obviously, Richardson has that ban because he threw a flare in the stands. Stupid ban, honestly. That happened at Everton. He's now banned at Spurs. But for me, at the moment, for the first game week, and in my draft currently, it may change, probably will, Diaz is in there. The next player, then, I've seen a few people put this man in their team, but I really like his opening four fixtures. Philippe Coutinho, now... He started off extremely well at Aston Villa last year, he really did. And at the end of his time of his loan, obviously they bought him permanently in the summer. I think he failed to impress a bit. But if we just have a look at his fixtures quickly, his first four look very good. Apart from the Crystal Palace one, which I'm, to be honest, a bit unsure about. I think it's a tough game for any team to go to. Bournemouth away, Everton at home. One team who's just come up from the Championship, one team who nearly went down. And you, of course, you've got West Ham at home as well, which I don't think they're going to be nowhere near as good this year, especially with co Europa Conference League to play as well. I think he's got very good opening fixtures. Now, a player in everyone's teams who, all of a sudden, he is in everyone's teams because I think a couple of people made videos. Look how cheap he is this year. Um, he's in my team as well. I've got to be honest. I was going to put him in my team before everyone started saying. And it wasn't really very kind on him for his return. I think he is their main player, Pedro Neto, um, at 5.5 mil. If it doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. He's a very cheap player. I think he's going to do quite well this year. He didn't really do, as I said, that well when he returned from injury last year. But I hope that he will do better this year. I'm going to fill in my last midfielder in a minute. But this is one of the biggest talking points. I can't really think of anyone that doesn't have Haaland in their team. 61% owned. And you look at someone like Kane, 19.4% owned. But actually, I'm going with Harry Kane. Now, my plan, as it stands, is to basically keep Kane in for the first fixture. And in the second fixture, where Spurs have Chelsea and City have Bournemouth at home, bring in Haaland. I think it's a no-brainer. Kane definitely has a better first fixture. And to be honest, I do think Haaland will probably score against West Ham away. But I think Kane will also score against Southampton at home and it's a much better fixture for us. Kane, for me, is going to have an insane year this year. I actually think he's going to win the Golden Boot. Um, I think Haaland might take a while to settle in. I still think he'll have a very good opening season. But I don't think he's going to get more than 20 goals. Second one, Man United fans. You're going to be happy with this one. And it's because I've done a bit of research and I've gone into my opinion, I think, and I'm not listening to anyone else on this point. I'm going with Anthony Martial now. He was at Sevilla last year. I actually saw him playing the Europa League live when they played West Ham and he got knocked out. And honestly, this is this is a decision that's just come to my mind. I've looked at his pre-season games and, of course, you can't really look into it that much. But he's got four goals and assists and two man the matches in three games. I think he looks very good. Ten hard ball. Looks to be working quite well. I'm not overhyping United after they won 4-0 against Liverpool because simply... It was Liverpool's second team. Martial is someone who I have always rated. He has been hot and cold. But I think at his best, he can be very dangerous and a very good player. At the moment, he's got the spot on my team. Unless I change in the future to one up front and don't start with Martial, you can find out over on my Instagram, at goalsandgossip underscore. I'll link it down in the description. Martial at the moment's got the spot and he's not at the moment coming out. Let me know if you're considering Martial down in the comments below. I'd actually be really interested to know. Or is this call from me actually made you think, you know what, 
Martial could be a decent option this year. These last two spots are only really fillers and I've got 4.5 to spend on both. So let's just put that around 4.5. Oh, actually, I had this man in, Andreas Pereira. Now it looks like he's going to start at Fulham next year. Obviously, Carvalho has gone to Liverpool, who he was their best player last year. I know Mitch Fitz got loads of goals, but for me, he was their best player. Andres Pereira looks like he's going to come in and fill that void. Now, he was at Man United, failed to impress. He was out on loan in Brazil last year, I think it was. Um, I think he's going to do quite well for them, to be honest. Um, I haven't really seen too much of him as a player, but I've never really thought he was too bad. And to be honest, I think Fulham are going down anyway. I think Mitrovic, he got something like 40 or goals last year, and I think he's going to get something like six this year. That's why I'm not even considering him for my team. I think Andreas is quite a decent shout. So Tommy Yasu and Andreas on the bench, as it stands, I think it's pretty good. And the last player to go in my team is Cameron Archer now. He was on loan at Preston North End last year, and he's actually doing very, very well for Aston Villa in pre-season. I remember when he burst onto the scene with a header against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup. I think he's got a very promising future out of him. He's also done very well for England's under-21s. He scored a couple of goals in the international break there before the players went away on the holidays. But I've got to be honest, I think he's going to be decent this season and might even get some minutes. Now, that's my team. I'm going to enter my squad. Right, so this is my team. You know what, actually, looking back at Sanchez, this is the beauty of FPL in hindsight. I think he might be in my team because Man United away isn't an easy game. I didn't really consider the fixtures for that one for some reason. But that actually will be the team I'm going to go for. Um... Salah will be my captain first week and Kane will be my vice. Obviously, you've got Sanchez in goal. As I said, he might be getting replaced. Alexander Arnold, Chilwell, Perisic and Cancelo at the back. We've then got Salah, Luis Diaz, Coutinho and Neto in midfield with Kane and Martial up front. Now, guys, let me know down in the description how you think I'm going to fare in FPL this year. Do you agree with my team? Is there someone that I just haven't mentioned and you think has to be in that team this year? Or is there someone in my team which you think there's no chance he's going in my team? Thanks for all the support recently, guys. As I said, make sure you subscribe down below for the new season. I'm so gassed for the new season. We're so close to a 1,000 subscribers. Please hit the subscribe button down below. It'll be greatly, greatly appreciated. And yeah, I'll see you in another video very, very soon. But until then, I'll see you next time. Peace.